Psalms chapter 145. Psalms 145. I'm going to read from verse 2, 3, and 4. Psalm 145, verse 2. I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, Every day I will bless you, I will press, I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable, that is beyond our understanding. One generation shall praise your works to another and you shall declare your mighty acts. One generation shall praise your name, your works to another generation. From one generation to another generation. You don't, you will not find a verse in the Bible for a children's ministry in the church. You don't find any verse. Uh, the one verse you can find closer to uh, having a church ministry, you may find in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20 to 24. But then you don't find any scriptural to support that the children are taught by a pastor or by a youth worker or someone who's from the church. You will always find that a parent or from one generation to the next generation, you are to pass it on. <clears throat> Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, you know, teach the children the way they, in which they have to go. So when they grow, they will not go away from the word of the Lord. You know, teach them. Teaching your children and, you know, from one generation to another generation. Here, it says in verse 4, it says, one generation shall praise. So you are to uh, pray, you are to give the praises of God from one generation to another generation. It's, you know, it says your works to another. What God has done in your generation, in your life, you got to Praise, you got to do the praise, and that has got to be given to the next generation. So, how do you, you know, teach your children, or how do you teach another generation, is by praising about what God has done, the works what God has done. It's not about, hey, come on, get up in the morning, read your Bible. No. It is necessary for us to read the Bible. We need to understand uh, what God is telling from the Bible. But then it says, your praises of one generation to another generation. So how do I praise God in my generation to another generation? Like if I have to uh, praise about God to uh, my children, I have to tell about God to my children. How do I tell? How, what should I tell my children about God? How do you tell your children? Do you tell them to study the Bible or do you tell them how to study or do you tell them what to do? No. It is about you tell them what God has done and you praise God. It's a simple thing, you know, there are, um, when you tell your children, about something which they don't understand, they may not understand. But you can tell them, yeah, when you go out, you eat, and then you come home, you can tell them, thank God that we did not meet with any accident. See how God has protected us. We were able to go out and eat. See, God has blessed us with money. So, daddy can afford to use that money. We can buy food for you, so you can eat. So imagine, I have bought your clothes, that, you know, it is God has given me the money. So all those works, what God has done in your life, you are to teach your children. You are to praise Him. The praises is a very good thing. 
it's not, you know, there are so many things God has done. Today, if I can ask you that, you know, you praise God for it, you may think, oh, I was praying for such and such thing, I didn't get it. That's the first thought comes to you. I'm having a stomach pain or I'm having a leg pain. But there are so many things you can thank God. Today, you can thank God you are alive. You can praise God that you are alive today. You know, as we know that somebody else passed away. Those who we know. He is not old, but young age, he is passed away. And you are alive, so you can thank God. You can praise God. Second is, you are not in the hospital. You are here. That's a big miracle. Praise God. You all here today. That's a big miracle. You know, one third of the population today is went to bed without food. One third of the population on the world today went to went to their sleep without eating. Today in our home, even entire supermarket closes, you can eat for next 10 days in your home. We all have got enough food in our home. Don't we, don't we praise God for it? There are so many things you can praise God for it. There are so many things. That praises you got to teach your children. That's what the Bible says. You got one generation has to teach the next generation. You got to tell your children. Come to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I commanded you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Please get this very clear. The pastor will not teach your children. The youth worker will not teach your children. The mother will not teach your children. The father has to teach the children. I don't know, for some reason in the Christianity, it's only the mother reads the Bible, the mother reads the Bible story, the fathers are missing. The fathers are supposed to tell the children. You, you, you can go back and study, I can give you enough number of scriptures from, uh, from um, Exodus to uh, the New Testament come until Ephesians, I can tell you there are so many places the fathers are commanded to teach their children. Not mothers, not the pastor, not the Sunday school teacher. It very clearly says, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. When you lie down, that is before going to sleep or when you are sleeping in the bed, your son is come, your son or your daughter coming and lying next to you, then you should say, Oh, thank God that we are in our home, we are in a bed, we are going to sleep, let's praise God for it. And then when you wake up, you can say, oh, praise God, we are awake, we are still alive, oh, praise the Lord. And then when you walk, when your house, when you sit down in your house, that is when you are eating, you can tell, oh, thank God we got the food, thank God you got the clothes, thank God you can shower, thank God you are in right mind. And then when you walk on the way, when you are taking them to the school, when you are taking them to the supermarket, when you are taking them to the restaurant, you talk to them. That means it's always. That's what God is telling. You teach your children always what they need to do. And then you see, verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as the frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost on your house. On, on your gates. So in your home, the calendar or whatever you want to put or everywhere, you should be able to see the word of God. You should be able to teach them. You know why we got this house name so and so? We have named our house and we know the reason why we have named that house and there is a story behind it. We have got a house, there is a story. We got a car, there is a story behind it. You have got, for everything, there is a reason, there is a story behind. Does your children know about it? 
Does your children know about what, has, what God has done in your life? Here it says, you have commanded to tell the children. Today you see there are many children in, in our, um, uh, our people in our area that they don't follow, follow God. When they go to university, they, don't, they no longer follow. Because when they are young, we take so much of time and energy to send them to the tuition. We want them to learn music, we want to learn them uh, the, um, uh, maybe a Tamil or a Telugu or whatever language. You want them to learn uh, you know, uh, dance or you want to learn them um, uh, music or Carnatic music, this class, that class. We, we spend money, we spend our time, we do all those things. But what most important thing in their life is God. But we don't do that. Just for a moment you think. When they are going to school, when they are going to write an exam, they are going to pass and then they are going to get a degree. That degree is not going to save them from their sin. The degree is not going to save them from going to hell. What is more important? It's eternal life. It's knowing God. You know, after they go, then they go on to university, then they become, they don't follow God. Then after that you sit and cry. Oh, my son is dating a non-Christian, my daughter is dating a non-Christian, she doesn't come to church. Pastor, please pray. If you read your Bible, it's very clear. It says when they were young, you should teach them. I want to show you a video. You know, this is maybe a little, um, maybe a little louder and a little faster. You concentrate. But I want you to watch this video.
the Joshua and the elders, they were alive, they were serving the Lord. But when they all died, then they all, then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the balls. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed the other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them and they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. See, instead of serving the Lord, they started provoking anger to God. Um, men, it is time you wake up and you teach your children. It is not, don't please, do not depend on, upon your wife or do not depend upon the church, do not depend on anything else. You know, the Bible very clearly says the children are a gift from God. It's not, they don't belong to you, they belong to God. God has trusted you and he has given you the children. And you as a head of the house, and you have to teach your children. If you don't do that, because one generation failed, the next generation also failed. But it is time that we, as a generation of new believers, we teach our children. We have to teach our children. We have to tell them about what the work, what the Lord has done. That's why, you know, Psalm, when the Psalm is wrote in Psalm 140, he says, I will praise the name of God from one generation to the next generation. The praising, it's not about, you know, not only teaching, it's praising. How, what God has done, what a wonderful God we have, or what a God we can trust, that's what we need to do. You know, I pray that, you know, my children will always follow the Lord, God, in their life of their lifetime. You know, very young age, they committed their life, they baptized, and when they were very young, less than 10 years old, they both of them got, you know, baptized. And I pray that, you know, you will all pray for your children, that they will commit their life to God at their young age, so that they can follow all the days of their life. It's very important. At least you, you, you won't have regret. That I know I have brought up my children. God has trusted me and he has given me my son, my daughter. I have brought it in the right way and she is able to follow. Then you will be very happy and you will be able to stand before God. Yes, Lord, you trusted me. You have given me the gift of my children and I brought them in the right way and I am happy. So God can tell you, well done. Because if you don't do that, then they will do evil in the sight of God. They will, they will ask you a question, where is God? They will ask. It's your own children will ask. I know one of the um, person who is a very well-known pastor who is, uh, whom I know, he always tells me, I pray that, you know, if my children are not following the Lord, God, let them have met with an accident. Let them break their legs. Let them break their hands. Let them break whatever. At least let them come to know you. Let him go with one hand, let him go with one leg to the heaven. I don't want him to go to hell. Full body. He, he says, he openly says, if any, any time my children is not following God, let them have an accident. I pray, he says, I will pray for them. I will pray for my children that way. Because I don't want them to go full body to hell. Even if some parts are missing, let them go to heaven. That's a kind of a prayer we should, that's how we should love our children. That we want them, it, it, it is not... Here, the best life is not here. The best life is the other side. You know, come to Psalm 78. I will tell you, you know, some of the things, you know, even though it's Psalm 78 also runs the same thing, you know, how we are to teach our children. Uh, verse 4, you look at it. We will not hide them from their children, telling the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. You know, I don't know how many of you remember this. Every time when God does a miracle in the old covenant, when they came out of, they passed the Red Sea, God says, okay, take a pile of stone, put it on it. Okay, what is this? You make a landmark. When they come, when they ask you, what is this? You tell them, you know, when we came that day, the Passover day, there was a Red Sea. There was nobody this side, the Egyptian army. And we thought we are going to die. 
and then God came, he opened the Red Sea, so we walked, that is what this is. And then when they come to River Jordan, same thing, he, God tells Joshua, you put a pile of stone. Every time they do something, God says, put a landmark, and you ask them. Now that's one thing really amazing, even today, the Jewish generation, till they celebrate the Passover, you know, when they are going to have a Passover meal, they, they will keep the uh, food, everything ready in the dining table. They all will sit together. And the youngest in the family, the youngest daughter or a son, will have to ask the question, what are we doing? Why are we eating? Then, the oldest member in the house, even it happens even till today, the oldest member will say, Okay, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years before, the Israelites were living in Egypt. They were living as a... And he has to tell the whole story, how God came, how the Red Sea was parted, and how they walked through, and how they killed the lamb, how they ate, how they came out. He has to tell the entire story. All the children, all the adults should listen to it. After that only they will eat. Even till today they practice it. But today, are you really thanking God before eating? Are you telling your children, pray and eat? Are you teaching them? Are you doing it first? Then only you can tell your children. If you are sitting and watching television and then telling your son to study Bible, will he study? He may be opening his Bible, but he'll be, his ears will be on the television. What is dad watching? What is mom, mom, mom is watching? He won't be reading the Bible. You are a hypocrite if you do that. You don't have to tell. If you, are, if you get up in the morning, you sit and read the Bible, your children will watch. He knows he has to read his Bible. You don't have to tell them. Children, they, they learn by observing. If you are going to sit and read the Bible, then they will know, yeah, I have to read my Bible that they will do it. So you have to live as a role model and then you have to tell them about what God has done. So he says, verse 5, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. See, one, you should know. Then you should teach your children. The problem is, first you do not know. Most of them, they don't know. Then only they can. If you know, only they can teach your children. It's very simple. If you don't have in the part, it won't come in the handle. It won't. So you got to put it. Then only it will come. Look at verse 7. I'll read verse 9. Last time we'll read verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed, and carrying bows turned back in the day of the battle. See, they are put all the armors to go to fight. They got everything, but when the day they were to go for a battle, they turned and they came back. And then the verse says, Why? They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in His ways and forgot His works. Forgot His works and his wonders that he had shown them. We are quick to forget. <coughs> Unfortunately, we don't forget somebody has done wrong. We quickly forget somebody has done, the Lord has done a good thing to you or somebody has done a good thing to you, but they make one wrong move, you don't forget. I will forgive, but I won't forget. But here, they forgot what the Lord has done. If you forget about what the Lord has done, I can tell you, I can guarantee you that you will not be able to face your enemies. The children of Ephraim, they could not. They could not. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. You know, you can go back go home and read it. It says, Verse 1 it says, Honor your father and mother so that you will have a long life on the earth. That's the first covenant with a promise. 
So you have to honor your father and mother. So that you will have a long life. How does the honor come? Only when you teach them, when you explain to them. I'm sure that there are children who will be able to come and say, Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for bringing me in the knowledge of God. If they don't tell you, they will tell you for eternity. I'm telling you, they will tell you for eternity. When you go away from this earth, you don't know when we are going to go away. But we are all going to go away from this earth. But when we go away, when you know that your children are following the Lord, you will go home happy. Yes, I have done what I have been asked to do. That's very important. Because if you do not follow, if you do not teach your children, if you don't teach your children, and they don't going to follow, and you will fail miserably. But there are benefits when you teach them. So maybe next week I will teach you about how to teach them and what are the benefits with that and how will you remember to teach them, how you will remember on your own. But first I want you to ca carry this message. You can go back, study the scriptures. How the generation of Joshua followed the Lord, the next generation they failed. In the Judges repeatedly it says that the children of Israel they did whatever they wanted. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. It's repeatedly that phrase comes. Why? Because they forgot what the Lord has taught them. The, what, the wonders what God has done. So today I pray that you will, if you are not teaching your children, you will start teaching them. It's not that, you know, taking the Bible, you keep, food, keep the food on the dining table and then you take the Bible preaching half an hour. No. I'm not saying that, that nothing will go into their head. You can simple way, you can praise God and you can share with them everything, whatever the God has done and encouraging one another and teaching them and bringing them in the knowledge of God. It's very important. If you don't, then you will find it very, very miserable. You will find it. I'll end with this uh, story. The two people walked on the very busy street. One was a scientist, the other one is a normal person. The scientist asked this person, what do you hear? And they were in the park on the busy uh, uh, roadside and everything. He said, I hear the motor, I see the cars going, I see a lot of people walking, some running, and the bats are flying, and I see the garden, I see so many things. And he was saying all those things he was hearing and everything. He says, That's, is that all you can hear? Yeah, what are you trying to get me? He said, you know, it is a choice what you want to hear in the midst of the all things. He said, um, can you explain to me a little further? He said, it is a choice what you want to hear. To explain what he did is he took a coin. In the busy way on the street, he dropped the coin. At least about 20 people turned around. At least 20 people turned around of the clinging sound of the coin. There were so many cars passing by, there were so many noises, yet people were able to identify a coin drop sound because they know what it is. It is a coin. Is it my coin or am I getting a free money? You need to develop that kind of a habit in your family life. We need to learn to develop them to hear from God. It is, you know, the way you train your children, that children should come and tell you, let's pray. The children should say, come, let's thank God for it. The children should be able to say, come, let's hear from God. 
Let's hear from God what God wants to do. Let, let us hear from it. I want you to train your ears and your children ears to the sound of God. Then many of the sounds. We saw in the video, your children, when they are awake, more than eight hours, they are in their school. They are hearing all kinds of noises. But what they hear in you, in, in your home, the word of God, what will determine what they are going to be. So let this sound be a little louder. So when they go into the school, when they go and talk to their friends, when they hear something different than what the Bible teaches, then we will be able to tell them. Because there are challenges as the children growing up and you also bringing up, there are challenges. People always ask me, I always tell, we have got only a Bible culture. We don't worry about Asian culture, we don't worry about British culture, we don't worry about American culture, we have got a Bible culture because we are Christians. <coughs> and also, the phones will get upgraded. You may have got S3, now S4 is coming. You may have iPhone 4, now iPhone 5 has come. Maybe the software will upgrade it. Maybe the system will get upgraded. Maybe your books will get upgraded. The Bible is always the same. Mm -hmm. You know, the, still the humanity has not found out what the Lord has told in the Bible. It has taken ages for them to, to confirm what the Bible said. So this never changes. So you can use this word to bring up a family which will glorify God in their everyday life. So I pray that you will take it very seriously and you will teach your children. Remember this 4 to 14 age window is very, very important. If you have got a children between this age, less than 18, it is time. You pray the prayer and you teach them. You take time to talk to them and tell them about what God has done in your personal life. And that will help them. Let's pray.